room. I thought you had it. The ladle stays in the pot. Clara, please stop grabbing my hair. In a way that you're not, not gonna cut. No, you don't wanna cut your finger. Stop, stop. Hey, close the top. We have a mess. We have a mess. If I'm being completely honest, as a mom of four young kids, inviting them into your kitchen to help you cook is hard. It's messy, it takes longer, it's not always the most fun, but every time I do, it is so worth it. And so I'm gonna share with you how we get our kids involved in the kitchen and the benefits that we've seen from that. Go downward with our motions. There you go. There. Can I show you that little piece? All right. Um, that's a humongous goo. You do? Yeah. Lick in your hands? Is that what you're doing? Sneaking the cheese? No raisins in enchilada sauce, buddy. <laughs> you think we should put raisins in our enchilada sauce? That would be kind of silly. That would be ridiculous. All right, so just remember, this is hot up here. When I was a kid growing up, one of my favorite experiences was what our family called dinner nights. So each week, my sister and I would each select a meal that we would make. We'd create a grocery list that we'd give to my mom to take to the store to buy all the ingredients. And when that night rolled around, we were responsible for making dinner. My mom would help us, but for the most part, we made the food and we got it ready to put on the table to serve our family. And it was like my favorite thing ever. It was so empowering and I love to have that responsibility of making food for my family. It just felt really good. And mind you, growing up, I did not come from a homestead or from scratch cooking sort of family. So my two favorite meals that I like to make for my family were hot dogs and macaroni and cheese and uh, homemade, well, I say homemade, uh, pizzas with pre-baked pizza crust that you just top the pizzas with whatever you wanted. Ham and pineapple was my favorite. Those were usually the meals that I selected, but even making those two meals was so empowering to me as an elementary school student to be able to make dinner for my family. That's actually probably pretty good. So now we are doing something similar with our family. So every week I ask them to choose one meal that they would like to make the next week. And with four kids, I'm not having them each have their own night of the week. That would be too much, but we do one meal collectively that they agree on that we make. So for example, this week we are making chicken enchilada casserole, and this is one of our family's favorite meals. One of the rules of dinner nights is that they're not allowed to pick the same meal two times in a row. There has to be some variety, but chicken enchilada casserole is definitely one that is a regular in our house. Okay, so can someone stir that in there real quick? Get in there with the spoon and start stirring it together. Today we are starting with making, like I said, we're making a layered chicken enchilada casserole and we make our own homemade enchilada sauce, which if you've never made it before, it's actually super, super easy. We make a broth-based enchilada sauce, so this is a great way to use up that chicken broth. A couple days ago, we did our weekly cook a big old chicken, make a whole bunch of broth, and then have the leftover chicken that we are going to use in this casserole. This looks so good. All right, so now we're gonna pour in our broth. So that stuff that we just added is gonna cause our broth to thicken make our sauce. So to make that enchilada sauce from scratch, all you're gonna do is make a roux. So you're gonna heat some flour. You can use just regular flour. We're using tapioca flour, which is just a gluten-free thickener alternative to regular flour. Mix together your fat and that flour, and then add in your seasoning. So this is just a, you know chili powder, paprika, garlic, a mixture of kind of enchilada spice seasonings and then mix that together with your broth and stir it until it all heats up to a boil and then it's going to thicken into a nice, thick, creamy enchilada sauce. We'll post that exact recipe below so you can see all the amounts and everything that we use, but that is something that honestly prior to 10 years ago, I would have thought it was only possible to buy enchilada sauce from the can. I would have had no idea how how it was possible to make it yourself, and now that we make it, it's like 
that's so easy. It only takes five minutes and it uses really basic ingredients that we always have on hand. And with using a broth-based enchilada sauce, you're also getting all of the good nutrients from your broth. So it's gonna be more nutritious and healthier. Ah, now it's thickening. See that difference? It's ready! Yep, now it's thickening. All right, let's move it back. Now stir it a little bit. Can I see it? Can I see it? Does it seem thicker? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's thicker. So some things that have made these dinner nights of inviting our kids in the kitchen to cook a meal more successful has been making sure that we leave plenty of time for cooking. So if you are rushed and do not leave enough time, it is a super stressful, not fun experience for you and for them. So. What we do is we make sure that we leave ourselves plenty of time to make the food that we are gonna have for dinner that night. All right, I think we are about there. When it comes to our kids cooking in the kitchen, I try really hard to not hover or be overly critical of the way they do things and let them do it their way. If there is going to be some sort of dangerous situation, maybe someone working with a knife, chopping things, or making a huge mess, I will definitely intervene. But for the most part, I try to be as hands-off as possible to let them learn and let them have that experience of doing it themselves. And I found that that is, when I can do that, which is not always easy, that it always pays off. And when we do these meal making nights together, these dinner nights, it is definitely not a streamlined, smooth process. So we are often interrupted by, you know, a baby getting up from her nap and needing to be nursed or, you know, who knows what. People needing to go to the bathroom and wash hands. There's, there's all sorts of things that can interrupt our meal making time. So that's why I said leave plenty of time. Know that you might be taking breaks and doing things in increments, but as long as you leave plenty of time, it will get done eventually and dinner will get on the table that night. So I like to use use your hand to hold it when you're cutting it. Because if you're not holding it, it can be it can move on you, be a little more wild. See? So go in there with your other hand, hold your mushroom in a way that you're not, not gonna cut, no, you don't wanna cut your finger. See how I was like around the knife holding it? I try as much as possible in an age appropriate way to include everyone. So I don't give our three year old like a steak knife to use to chop up mushrooms or chicken, but our five-year-old is, is very capable of doing that. And it's really cool to see how over the years, now our eight-year-old is really pretty proficient with a knife and can do a really good job chopping things. And, and our five-year-old is just kind of starting to learn those skills, but he will get there. And it's just really cool to see them use the real tools and gain confidence in doing that. If I can enter into that time just relaxed, knowing that we have plenty of time and that the goal is simply to make something and have fun together, it has been such a phenomenal just bonding time and time to really connect and have them learn these real life practical skills in real ways that I have always appreciated. So lest you think that I am like superwoman or super mom, I am absolutely not. Like it might look, you know, picture perfect in these videos of everyone making food and smiling and happy and having a good time. But I promise that tears happen, messes happen, I lose my temper, get impatient from time to time. So these are not always perfect experiences by any stretch of the imagination. However, the things that we always walk away with are that was really good and we're super excited to do it again next week. Usually while we're cooking the food for one week, the kids are already talking about what they wanna make the next week. So even though it rarely goes perfectly, it always ends up being worth it and being really, really good. I think the enchilada casserole is one of their favorites because not only do they really like it, it's delicious, but it's also just fun to make. It's basically you know, like making a lasagna, just making a bunch of layers in a pan. So you're gonna start off by layering first layer of enchilada sauce on the bottom, and then you're gonna add your tortillas on top of that. And so 
we do different things here. Sometimes we'll make sourdough tortillas that we use or we've made homemade corn tortillas. Sometimes there's a brand here that we can get that's a authentic Mexican corn tortilla, non-GMO corn. They don't add any extra oils or anything like that to the tortillas. So sometimes I will stock up on those to just have ready to go corn tortillas. So that's what we're using here today. So do a layer of corn tortillas and then on top of that you're going to do your filling. And so this can be really the kitchen sink, whatever you wanna put in your enchilada casserole filling. Today we sauteed up some garlic and onions and added some mushrooms. Our kids love mushrooms. Peppers are the one vegetable that really no one in our family is crazy about, sweet peppers. So they always say, can we put mushrooms in instead of peppers? Because whenever we put peppers in anything, they always seem to know. So we are doing garlic and onions and mushrooms and then we are adding black beans. I soaked these overnight last night and then first thing in the morning I got them cooking. I heated them to a boil and put them in our slow cooker. So I got them cooking and so they're nice and soft. So we're going to add the black beans and then some diced chicken that I said we had left over from cooking a whole chicken the other day. We're going to mix those together with about a cup and a half of the enchilada sauce that we made. And that is going to be our filling that then we're going to spoon over the tortillas. And then on top of that, we're going to put a layer of cheese. So we make our own cheese here. We do farmhouse cheddar and mozzarella cheese. So we're just gonna do a mixture of our mozzarella and farmhouse cheddar cheeses. And then you do two more layers of that. So tortilla, filling, cheese, tortilla, filling, and then you're gonna put another layer of the enchilada sauce over the top, sprinkle it with cheese, and that's it. That's how you make your enchilada casserole. So it's definitely a recipe that's a little bit of a labor of love. It has several different components, but it comes together pretty easily. It's really fun for the kids to make, and everyone just really loves the end product. All right, so now we're gonna start making our enchilada casserole layers. We've gotten asked quite often over the years how our kids are such good eaters or not picky eaters or really just, you know, we'll be at a party or something and all the other kids will be off playing and our kids will be the only ones sitting at the table eating their food and why is that and how does that happen? And I think at the end of the day, like it's not because of any, you know, we're not forcing them to sit at the table when everyone else is off playing, but I think just because we have such a family culture around food and around valuing food and enjoying food together. It's just something that they enjoy doing. We value cooking real from scratch meals all the time, pretty much for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. And so really that's all they know. So I would say they're not picky because they just eat what we have. We don't have a bunch of packaged convenience food, processed foods in our house. And so they just don't have a ton of experience with them. They have had things occasionally if we are out at a party or somewhere else and that's been given to them. But for the most part, they eat what we have in our house and they like that. If we have a meal that is not their favorite, which totally happens from time to time, their kids aren't, they don't eat everything, but we tell them if this meal is not your favorite, that's okay. This meal is not your favorite. Eat the things that you want and there'll be another meal coming soon. We don't make a different meal for them if it's not their favorite. And I think a big part of this too is just modeling for them that. So Jim and I are not really picky eaters and we eat everything that we make. We don't pick things out or only eat part of it or whatever. We definitely just model an enjoyment and appreciation of food and of what we have. Even if something is not our favorite, we don't make a big deal or complain about it. We just, we eat it and we enjoy it and we try to model that for them to see. Go for it. Lately, I've been hearing a lot of just the really unique statistics about the value of family meals and eating family dinners together that I really thought were pretty shocking. I mean, 
it makes sense if we are eating regular meals together as a family that that would have a big impact on kids, but just what those things were, I thought were pretty staggering. And you can look up the exact numbers. I don't have those right here, but just things like better grades, positive health incomes, obviously, if you're eating home-cooked meals as opposed to you know going out or eating on the go. A big one is just decreased mental health things, which are just such a growing thing, especially with kids, depression, anxiety. And so just with the addition of a regular family meal together, there's a pretty drastic decrease in those mental health issues that we are seeing on the rise today, as well as I even heard the statistic about there being a higher earning potential for those kids once they reach age 30 who have had regular family meals together as a kid. So it's just really interesting to think about not just the immediate impact of what those meals are doing in those kids' lives, but just the lifelong impact that those strong family connections that happen over the dinner table. What do you do? Licking your hands, is that what you're doing? Sneaking the cheese? That's what I in see. In a culture that really values convenience and ease, time and time again, we just find how when we go against that and do things that are harder or may take a little more work, it always pays off. All right, enchilada casserole. Yay! You guys did it. So for instance, like screens, we've never really introduced screens or let our kids watch screens at all from the beginning. We'll do a maybe once a month movie night as a family, but beyond that, we don't do screens and we see the benefits of them now just being really great, independent, creative players who can play together or with each other for hours and hours and hours without needing to be entertained or really need anything from us. And so I think that that has really been worth it and I think it's similar to the kitchen and cooking. Well, sometimes it would be much more convenient to just make everything myself and not invite them in to the messiness and the way that that slows things down. It definitely requires a lot more patience and is more challenging. It is so worth it to invite them into that process and to teach them and those are gonna be skills that are gonna last them a lifetime and even pay off in our family when hopefully in a few years, they will be the ones cooking dinner for us. And I think too, inviting them into the kitchen and I mean, for us here on our homestead, inviting them into the homestead with our animals and growing food and seeing how it is produced has just given them such a value and appreciation for food and for where it comes from and for eating the things that they make and they produce and not wasting things. It's just a different level of value and appreciation than I think they would have if they weren't involved in that process. We like to serve our enchilada casserole alongside Spanish rice. And so this is another one that's really simple to make. I will post the recipe below and you can make this in an instant pot, which we often do if we are going to like a potluck or a gathering. Sometimes they'll you know, do like taco potlucks and this is a great side to bring for something like that. Today we're just gonna heat it on our stove and stick it in the slow cooker. So to make it, you're just gonna chop up some onion and garlic and get that sauteing on the stove. And then we are going to add our broth. I like to cook, if we have extra broth on hand, which we usually do, I like to cook rice in broth if I can, just to give it those extra nutrients and extra protein. And then you're gonna add in your rice. And then when we're making Spanish rice, I like to add in just some tomato sauce and then those kind of Mexican seasonings, chili powder, paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, cumin, things like that. After we have that all mixed up and it reaches a boil, I go ahead and put the lid on and put that in our slow cooker to cook for, usually only takes about an hour or less even until that rice is all cooked and that Spanish rice is ready to go. You guys wanna see your enchilada casserole? What do you think? Yeah, when we make enchiladas, our enchiladas always look like that. There's a rice in here. There's a rice in here. We have the rice is coming. Looks good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Looks really cheesy. Very cheesy. 
So like I said, this is a once a week dinner night that we do where the kids pick out what we're having, we make sure we have all the ingredients on hand, and then we take an afternoon where they help me cook the food. This isn't something that we are doing every night because I really like <laughs> to be in the kitchen. I really like and enjoy that time of cooking independently and being able to do things at my pace and get things done sometimes more quickly or how I want them. So don't think this is something we are doing every night of the week, but even just having that one day a week set aside over the course of many, many weeks and then years just makes a really huge difference. Like that is all gonna add up pretty quickly. And it's really cool to see as the kids are learning how to cook and learning those skills of chopping and stirring and preparing, how they are really able to help me with little things that we need throughout the week. So I'm really excited how in a couple of years, hopefully this means they will fully be able to take over cooking a certain meal or helping with breakfast and lunch and other meals throughout the day that's gonna be really, really valuable and helpful to our family in the future. So while taking the time to plan ahead get our kids input on the thing that they wanna make the next week, making sure we have all the ingredients on hand and then taking that time to make something together and let them really have time to learn these skills can be exhausting and overwhelming. I'm so grateful for the way that my mom did that in my life and just the way that it gave me so much confidence in the kitchen and I'm hopeful that it will have the same effect on our kids moving forward.